I founded the Design Build Vertical Flight Competition about four years ago with, Ver with the Vertical Flight Society, and so this is our fourth annual competition. Yeah, so several years ago, we kind of had this idea to create a student competition within the Vertical Flight Society, and students have the entire year to design an aircraft, physically build it, and then come to a competition and fly off against each other. And that was kind of the inception of the VFS DBVF. We had, I think, eight or nine teams that were able to show up today and actually compete to promote advancements in vertical flight, to promote students and getting them interested in thinking about vertical flight, a career in vertical flight, um, opportunities to compete, exciting things to do. We have scholarships, we have other STEM opportunities, and we just really strongly recommend students uh, take a look at vertical flight. We're a senior aircraft design capstone team, and this was our project for the past eight months. No, this team was designed specifically for this competition. This is the VTOL team for our senior design project. We're honestly just happy to compete. We're here to see uh, our research come to life. We're gonna do the manual flight. Um, if that goes really, really well, we might do automated. Uh, behind us, right behind the camera right now, we just have a, a tent where all the teams are set up and you know in between test flights they're all you know huddled up next to each other, they're working on stuff, they're they're fixing something that broke in a previous test flight. You know, it's really cool getting to see all of the, the college teams come together and see you know all over the US how all these colleges are pursuing you know these innovations of vertical flight there are not a lot of people that have built this type of airframe in this uh, weight category before this vehicle sees a lot of research we're doing a lot of research on the flight control system on the actual um, design and sizing that goes into the vehicle how do we go about designing a drone from the ground up? So last year was our first kind of like, let's attempt something. But this year we wanted to try something different, be more original, being able to kind of work on the drone, seeing how the team is able to overcome hurdles. Uh, definitely it's stressful getting everything ready to rock and roll. But in the end, the experience of just seeing other teams, being able to communicate with other people who love this hobby, who love this kind of like engineering aspect, it's really something else. It's the math, uh, staying up until like 3 a.m., designing, CADing, printing, going back from the drawing, everything I can think of, I would do it again in a heartbeat because now I'm looking at it, it's probably the most fun I've ever had in a while. This is a quadcopter biplane. It takes off just like any old quadcopter you've ever seen, but it actually is capable of transitioning into forward flight on these two wings, much like a biplane. Um, it's designed the way that it is because whenever you transition and you're flying on your wings in that way, it's significantly faster and more efficient than the kind of cruise speeds you can get with a quadcopter. Um, as you can see, there are two wings here and it has four motors. So this is a biplane quadcopter. I think it's really cool to see all of the other teams and what ideas they came up with. So definitely um, our drone, although it doesn't have the the nice sheen finish as some of the others. It's a vehicle that could be truly used as a future eVTOL vehicle. Our design was the only one kind of of its type that I saw here. When we were uh, kind of deciding on a configuration that we were gonna use for this aircraft, we had a few different options, uh, some lift plus cruise options, but this was always the kind of the riskiest, most innovative design. 
Um, and we found that really appealing. So we went with our bicopter tilt rotor. I'm, I'm pretty confident in our, in our drone. We've, we've done, we put a lot of good work in and I'm pretty sure we have a pretty good product here. All the teams that we talked to, like other schools have been super, super nice. I mean, these propellers that we have on right now are not even ours. They're another teams that just lent us propellers. So, I mean, that sort of culture in the competition, I think is really beneficial. Like we're only gonna be able to fly today because we've been lent propellers from another team. Uh, there are basically three operations we had to demonstrate uh, during the flight testing. So one was we had to do a completely autonomous mission uh, and then we also had to do a manual mission where we had a fast first lap and then we had to do as many laps as we could in the next 10 minutes. Uh, and, so, and so one of the biggest challenges about this particular aircraft uh, goes back to the fact that it's designed to be a transitioning aircraft. And the reason for that is because we want the VTOL capability of a helicopter, but then we want the efficiency of a fixed wing aircraft in forward flight. And so we have to transition between these two orientations of the aircraft. And so one of the most challenging things associated with operating this aircraft is actually coming to the end of a lap and then turning around and coming back. So the best strategy we came up with was to go into fixed wing forward flight, transition back to hover mode, rotate around and then come back and so that maneuver was you know was sometimes challenging yeah so we were very happy with our, our fast lap we ended up completing our fastest lap in a minute and seven seconds it was a great moment to see a fly yesterday it's our longest flight by yeah. by yeah. like a lot so um it and it, and most stable. yeah it was a great it was a great safety flight um and we were really really happy with that autonomous portion went pretty well um the landing it still needs to be fine-tuned um there was uh, some pretty big oscillations on the landing um but with the weight configuration and the tuning, we kind of settled those out towards the end and thankfully it landed. Um, that's been one of our biggest problems when our tests, when we run with higher weight or different tunes, uh, we've had a few crashes that were solely due to uh, the oscillations that were uncontrollable towards the end. I have a, a quadcopter configuration and the main spar has a wing attached to it. So during horizontal flight, that contributes to a significant portion of our lift and makes our aircraft overall more efficient. Decided to use a, I would argue a more complicated um, design. We started with the lift plus screws, which is a very easy to control design, very stable. Uh, we went for a canard wing with uh, two tilting rotors here, so a little bit more of a complicated design um, to kind of push the limits and see what our research could do if our control system could handle it. And it has been actually very successful. Uh, we did do a nav attempt earlier and we actually write our own navigation script. And so because of that, um, you know, we're kind of reinventing the wheel a little bit. In my head, we built it for uh, fixed wing flight. It was kind of shaped for that. And um, to see it actually fly, take off and, you know, land um, uh, really made me happy. There are not a lot of people that have built this type of airframe in this uh, weight category before. So a lot of this was really kind of on us to innovate and test out what worked and what didn't work. And this especially came up when we were doing a lot of our flight test tuning and trying to figure out what um, 
parameters for the flight controller to change and we were trying to research what other people have done and there really just hasn't been a lot of work with this particular um, frame setup. It was a really interesting challenge to kind of dive into RD Pilot ourselves without a ton of documentation that already exists and I think we're, we're really happy with the point that we got to with the uh, research we were able to do. Tuning took forever. We spent literally thousands of hours um, trying to get this thing to hover properly. Um, and that's not even to mention transitioning into forward flight. So uh, innovative design, a lot of challenges to go with it, but it was totally worth it. We had a different full scale model um, that we achieved full transition with, although we crashed that one eventually. Um, this at the competition is actually the first time that our final model achieved full horizontal flight. piece of advice for future competitors, consider travel. Uh, we had an eight foot long plywood box that we had to fit into uh, oversized lug luggage restrictions. TSA got a little upset at us. So just think about that before you come to the competition. <laughs> it's literally the night before, all hours in the morning, then having to assemble it again after one of our ESCs started smoking. I was very, very, very concerned. We are pretty new, so we don't have a lot of members. So during our manufacturing and design processes, like. The, obviously there wasn't as much brain power as there would be in like a long-standing club. Our uh, hardware is 3D printed. Um, we would ran into a lot of delays and a lot of challenges. Jeremiah stepped up pretty big to get our autonomous portion working. Um, he's kind of been like our sole uh, team member that's working on the, uh, the software side and you know it worked pretty well. But to say the least, yes, we were absolutely nervous and especially with the crosswind coming through, we uh, we were optimistic, but obviously we let some nerves get under our skin as well. To kind of work on the drone, seeing how the team is able to overcome hurdles. Uh, definitely it's stressful getting everything ready to rock and roll, but in the end, the experience of just seeing other teams, being able to communicate with other people who love this hobby, who love this kind of like engineering aspect, it's really something else. Into this project, it was some of the busiest it was the busiest uh, two semesters I've ever had in college, but I think it was totally worth it. The payoff was incredible. It wasn't really about the end goal. It was more towards the journey, right? And I now looking at like doing all the calculations, the math, uh, staying up until like 3 a.m. trying to troubleshoot stuff, designing, catting, printing, going back, from the drawing, everything I can think of, I would do it again in a heartbeat because now I'm looking at it, it's probably the most fun I've ever had in a while. That it had the ability to do that, um, but to see it happen and to see the stars align and for it to actually happen during the competition is incredibly amazing, to say the least. So uh, excitement for me would be the word to see it happen. I think this crazy and this complex required the best pilot, so shout out to David. We put about 4,000 hours into this project. It was some of the busiest, it was the busiest uh, two semesters I've ever had in college, but I think it was totally worth it. The payoff was incredible. Um, this experience, we've learned so much about engineering, about teamwork, um, and about aircraft design in general. So totally worth it. I would definitely recommend that if you're into aerospace engineering at all, um, you attend this competition because this is a super rapidly evolving field, obviously. Uh, VTOL is evolving rapidly, particularly electric VTOL. The faculty advisor and lab director, I'd like to say a big thank you to the service and to uh, VFS for hosting this awesome competition again. Uh, we're glad to be participating. This is our second year and it's a, it's a great learning opportunity for, for all the uh, graduate students. Uh, three of the students you see are veterans. This is their second visit. 
and for the other two, it's their first time. So it's a, it's a great bonding opportunity for, for the students, a great opportunity to work together as a cohesive team, learn about each other's strengths and, and weaknesses. So it's, uh, it's great fun, great hands-on experience, and I think it's going to uh, help all their careers in the future. I plan on hopefully interning with Porsche in Germany over the summer and then starting my master's degree at North Carolina a and Applied to a lot of aerospace companies, um, doing some other things with drones or maybe more large scale aircraft, but um, aerospace is something that I'm interested in and would love to learn more about. I am hoping to go into the drone industry after I graduate. I'm going to go into the Air Force as a second lieutenant in the military and I'm either going to be force support officer or developmental engineer. For Enstrom, a helicopter company in the upper peninsula of Michigan as a ground test engineer. Uh, after I graduate, I'm going to be joining the Air Force as a nuclear and missile operations officer. After I graduate, um, I'm also going to be commissioning into the Air Force as a pilot. After I graduate, I'll be working for Northrop Grumman in California as a systems test engineer. After I graduate, I'll be also commissioning into the Air Force as a pilot.